Jake here for American Muscle, and today I've got the CCFL Halo Projector headlights with black housings and clear lenses for 2008 to 2014 Challengers with factory halogen headlights. If your Challenger came from the factory wearing those standard halogen headlights, you're probably on the hunt for an upgrade at this point. Enter these guys. These are perfect for the Challenger owner who's looking for a serious upgrade to the lighting and looks of their car in one easy OEM style package. Now, halogen headlights have been going the way of the Dodo for a long time now, and it's easy to see why. The replacement bulbs are cheap, lighting technology has come a long way in a very short time, and it's now even easier to make an update to your vehicle that came with hal reflector halogens from the factory. Now, these headlights bring some of the cool flavor of the newer Challengers to the table, starting with those CCFL or cold cathode fluorescent lamp halos. So when you power the car on, you're gonna get these cool halo style running lights that bring an aggressive look to the front end. Combine that with the black internal housing, it gives the car a pretty mean appearance and it brings it more in line style-wise with the latest model year Challengers. Now those halos are pretty darn bright when you fire them up and they look a little bit like neon lights. So they make a pretty dramatic visual statement. And when it comes to lighting performance, you get a nice upgrade as well. So in place of the factory reflector halogen main beams, you get these new projector style lights. So these are gonna have a much more clean and defined beam pattern than those standard reflector halogens. Though they utilize the same type of bulbs, which keeps replacement costs low, they're gonna provide a significant increase in visibility. Again, that beam pattern is gonna be much better defined, it's gonna be a much cleaner cutoff, and it's gonna cast light further down the road than your standard lights, so they're gonna look good on the outside and provide you with more visibility and thus more safety while you're behind the wheel. Now these are also gonna keep your standard style of turn signals, so you're gonna keep those incandescent bulbs. The inner rings here house the incandescent bulbs for the turn signals, they're still plenty bright, and again, you're gonna utilize those standard bulbs, which means running costs will be low and needed replacements will be easy. You're just gonna have to port over your bulb and socket from the car so you don't have to modify anything on the car, just plug it in right here. That also brings us nicely to the fact that these are designed to be an OEM style replacement. So when it comes to both construction and fitment, they're designed to bolt right in place of your factory units, making for an easy replacement. Now the light housings here are made from ABS plastic, so they're strong and they're durable, and the entire thing is sealed against the elements, just like your OEM units. You also get this clean polycarbonate lens on the outside, so these are resistant to UV rays. They're not gonna crack or discolor like a less expensive material might. Like I mentioned earlier, you also get those black internal housings that they're gonna blend in nicely with the grill of your charger, making for a pretty sleek and aggressive look up front. Out back, you've also got vents, of course, and you've got an adjuster here too. Nice little thoughtful touch to make sure that everything is gonna be legal. Now these are DOT and SAE approved, so as long as you have them aligned correctly, they are gonna be fully street legal. Pricing here is gonna come in around $650, which does make them quite a bit less expensive than some of the other options in the category, especially the actual Mopar OEM units. Now you won't get all the fancy features like say LED halos here, but that is part of the cost savings and you're still getting a different look with this setup with improved lighting and that OEM style construction. So for that, I do think it's a pretty good value. Installation will come in at a two out of three on the difficulty meter. It should take you about two hours to get it completed. Now, for the most part, these are a plug and play type of install. However, you are gonna need to run power and ground for those halos that we were talking about. And you're also gonna need to remove the front bumper in order to gain access to the bolts that hold in the lights. Once you've got the bumper off and the old lights out, you're gonna plug these in, run that power and ground, and you're set to go. And to show you that process, let's head over to the install bay right now. The tools you're gonna need for this install include an impact, an electric or regular 3 8 ratchet, wire strippers, a Phillips head screwdriver, a 10 millimeter socket, a 3 8 swivel socket, a 10 millimeter swivel socket, a 7 millimeter swivel socket, a T30 Torx socket, a 3 8 to quarter inch adapter, non-included T-taps and male ends, a panel removal tool, and a 3 8 extension. What's up guys, today we're going to be installing a set of headlights on our Challenger, but before we get started you're going to watch a short video on how to uninstall your stock headlights and I'll meet you back here for the install. Alright, now for the gun install we do have to remove our bumper to access the headlight bolts, so what we're going to have to do is a couple of preliminary things. We popped our hood, we're going to remove the two pieces for the radiator shroud to expose a couple of pushpin clips, and I'll use this panel removal tool to get those off. So under the hood, you'll find this little open hole on the side, on each side. You're going to pull up on that and set these guys aside. 
All right, now the first points that are connecting the bumper are these little black push pin clips. There's six of them on the black pieces. There are a couple in between that are on uh, your, you know, your factory paint color, in our case, Hemi Orange. You don't have to do those that are sitting on the paint color, just on the black plastic trim. Use a panel removal tool or something similar to get these guys off. You're basically just lifting up on the center piece and then it loosens up and you can pull it out. Set these aside. All right, now in the corners above each headlight where the bumper meets the fender, there's a small 10 millimeter nut on a stud holding on the corners there. We have to get that off. For this, I would highly recommend a 10 millimeter swivel socket. I'm gonna use my impact gun and extension and my swivel socket here. It might be a little tough to see, but once you get that locked on there, you can get it off. All right, just be careful not to drop it in. It can be pretty difficult. All right, just like that. Repeat that on the other side. For this one, we put the Challenger up in the air a little bit, but you can work on the ground as well. We're gonna be removing the four plastic pushpin clips in the wheel well. This is holding on this liner, which will give us access to a bolt underneath. Grab a panel removal tool and you're gonna remove all four. Ours is missing one, but that's all right. We've got three more to work with. You should have four there. Next, what you're gonna do is take the wheel well liner and you're gonna peel it back. Underneath of that, you'll see that there is a 10 millimeter bolt holding the fender to the bumper. All right, for this next bolt, we have this 10 millimeter right here. I'm gonna use my 10 socket to get this off. Next, we have a bolt that's pretty difficult to get to. It's where the fender meets the bumper upward a little bit more parallel to the headlight. So it's right about here facing toward the back of the vehicle. It's a nut on a stud. Now, you're never really gonna be able to see that on camera. It's so close up in here, but we're gonna use an extension and a swivel socket to get in there. We're gonna drop it on and remove the 10 millimeter nut. Like I said, tough to see, but if you follow this line up, it's right about here. All right, so now I'm gonna use two extensions for this guy and just feed a socket on a swivel joint to get up in there at the right angle. All right, I'm locked on right now. Just gonna get it off. All right, at this point, you can reach your hand in there and get the nut off the stud. All right, and there it is. Now you can repeat this exact same process in the wheel well on the other side. At this point, we got the vehicle up in the air completely to access the front splitter here and the belly pan. We have to remove all the bolts connecting these two together in order to drop our bumper. Now there's typically a bunch of seven millimeter screws holding on the front here, all along the front and the sides underneath of your fog lights. Now, ours have been replaced over the years. These are Phillips heads on ours. Yours will probably be seven millimeters. So just grab the appropriate tool and we're gonna get these guys off. All right, now we can move on to the sides. All right, so I have two seven millimeters on the side here. Same thing on the other side. All right, so now if you go backward a little bit to the belly pan, we have a 10 millimeter bolt on our subframe. All right, now if you go directly next to it on the other side, there's another one to take off. If you look at this little indent in the middle here, there should be three holes with three black pushpin clips. Now again, our Challenger has gone through some replacements over the years. These three guys are missing currently, but you should have three of those. Grab your panel removal tool, the same as we did under the hood, and get those three off and out of the way. All right, so next up, we have a couple of pushpin clips left. We have two here on the inside of the wheel well. We're gonna remove them on both sides. All right, I'll do the same thing on the other side.
All right, next step, this is loose, so let's pull our belly pan off. All right, a couple of things to note here before we grab our bumper off. Make sure when you're pulling this off, you're being careful not to scratch the paint with the studs on the side. Also, you don't wanna to go too far with it because we still have to disconnect our fog light harness. So as soon as you get it off, you wanna set it gently down close to the vehicle so you're not pulling on the harness. So from here, let's disconnect the sides, just like that. Same thing over here. Let's get it off. We're going right down with it right here. And now we can reach in and unplug our harnesses. All right, now on our passenger side, both fog lights feed into one master harness, which we're just gonna reach down here and disconnect. You can follow the fog lights down, find this connector and just disconnect. Now we can set our bumper safely aside, making sure we're not scratching the paint. All right, next up, we're gonna remove our headlights. Finally, we have three bolts, one at the top, two underneath there that were covered by the bumper originally. We're gonna grab a T30 Torx bit and an extension and get these three bolts off. All right, with this last guy out of the way, just carefully pull your headlight out of place and disconnect the harnesses. All right, so I'm gonna lift up on the red locking tab, pinch and disconnect on both sides. Right, set your stock headlight aside. All right guys, so before we get to the install, we have to swap out our turn signal bulbs over to our new headlights. The turn signal bulbs will be the bulbs that are closer to the grill. So we're gonna turn in this counterclockwise and pull out for our bulb and for our new one. Just reinsert and twist clockwise. Now we can get this wired up and installed onto the vehicle. So next we have to wire up these two red and black wires for our halo lights. So we're gonna take our wire strippers and strip away some of the insulation. I'm gonna twist the ends so it doesn't get frayed. Then we're gonna grab our male ends. We're gonna put it through, through the metal part. Make sure we hold that down. Then we can grab a pair of crimpers and we're gonna crimp down on the metal part. Flip it over to the other side and do the same thing. We do it for the red wire. Same process. So we can get these kind of up in here. So there's numerous ways that you can wire up your halo lights, but in our case, we've already pre-installed these T-taps, which the negative will be the black wire, and the positive will be the white with brown stripe. So now we can come over to our new headlight. We're gonna take our black wire, put that into the black. Just slides in through the top here. Grab our red wire, put it to the white and brown wire. Then we can get these up in place and make our other connections. Now with our OEM connectors, our black connector will be for the turn signals. Press in until you hear a click. Then you can press in this red tab. The green connector will be for the outside headlights. Connection, connection, press in the red tab. Now we can get these lined up like so. Now we can take our black bolts and we're gonna thread the first one in on the top. Just gonna thread that in hand tight first. Hold this up. Two more down here. Might be a little difficult for you guys to see. Now we're gonna use an eight millimeter swivel socket and tighten these down. Now 
Now you can repeat those same steps on the other side. So now we have the bumper close to the car. We're gonna reconnect our fog light harness to our connector if equipped. We make that connection so you hear a click. Now we can get this installed onto the car. All right guys, so now we can reinstall our bumper onto the vehicle. We're gonna make sure that that stud that we have the nut on the back will go back into this hole on the quarter panel and your plastic stud will go into this small hole. So now we can get this lined up. There we go. Same on the other side. So now we can reinstall our nut that goes on the stud that's up around here. So we can peel back on our fender liner. We're gonna thread this in by hand first. Locate the stud, thread that on by hand first. There we go. So now we're gonna reach in there with our long 10 millimeter socket, a swivel socket, and a long 3 8 extension. I'm actually gonna go in there first, just with the extension. There we go. Now from here, grab our impact. Now from here, peel back on our Get this. And we can take our 10 millimeter bolt. And we're gonna thread this through. Tighten that back up. We can reuse our same method here. Make sure your tab's in. We can press our fender liner back around. Now a good trick you could use to peel back on this fender liner is a flathead screwdriver. You use that to just push it back. And the rest of that should just push right into place. Now you can repeat this process on the other side. So now we're gonna reinstall our nut that holds on the bumper to the quarter panel. So we're gonna thread that onto the stud, like so. Then you can take a 10 millimeter swivel socket and tighten this down. Good, and now you can repeat that process on the other side. So now we're gonna reinstall our push clips. There's six up top here. So you can press that in and press in your tab. Try a different one on this one. Now we can reinstall our plastic covers. So these two tabs on the sides here will go into the side of the quarter panel. There we go. They'll kind of just click into place. Same for this side. This will go under the hood latch here. Just kind of click them into place. And now your install is complete. So that's going to wrap up the install on our CCFL Halo Projector headlights with black housings and clear lenses for your 08 to 14 Challenger with factory halogen headlights. Thanks for watching and for all things Challenger, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.